What's up guys, it's Dwayne, back again for another video, back in for the reaction and today is a great, wonderful, beautiful day and do you know why? I'll tell you why, because it's a Sweden day. My first impressions of Sweden, how does an American girl view Sweden? Without further ado, let's get into this reaction, let's go. Welcome back to another video. Thank you so much for joining me. Just move this chair a little bit. That's better. If you're new to my channel, then hello, welcome. My name is Kim and hello. I'm an American who lives part of the time here in America and part of the time in Sweden. I make videos about life in Sweden as an American, learning about new cultures, new languages, everything like that. So if that's something you're interested in, then please go ahead and click that subscribe button now for more videos like this. And if you are returning to my channel, then thank you so much for joining me in another You're video welcome. and welcome back. Hope everybody is doing great out there. It is November 14th and it's finally getting cold here in New Jersey. New Jersey? Oh, she's not in Sweden right now. <laughs> Sorry, I was like, New Jersey? Is this the wrong video? Kimberly, I thought you lived in Sweden. But she does live in Sweden. Um, yeah, she's just probably home for Christmas and Thanksgiving. It's like winter. It was like spring last week and now it's winter. Don't love it. I don't love it, but that's how you have to live. I mean, I'm gonna be living in Sweden, so I really have yeah. to get used to this cold. Anyways, I'm not here to talk about the weather. I'm here to talk about everybody's favorite subject, Sweden. Not everybody's favorite subject, but if you clicked on this video, then you're probably at least Am I interested it's my, in Sweden? It's my favorite subject. I would hope so, yep. I would think. Otherwise, <laughs> don't really know what you're doing here. In this video, guys, this is my knee, just so you know. This video, I wanted to take a little <laughs> stroll so down memory lane and talk about the first time that I was in Sweden back in 2012 and what I thought about Sweden, my first reactions, first impressions of things, and just kind of talk about that. Grab a... a because I want to, yes, this is a long intro, by the way, but I, <laughs> I'm excited about my first impressions of when I go to Sweden. That is going to be, um, I wonder if I'm just, I wonder what it's going to feel like, whether I'm just going to be like, oh, this feels like all the videos that I've watched and what I've learned about and like all the lovely Swedish people, you guys, that I've interacted with, with on my, on my Patreon, all, all you guys on there. Um, I wonder if it's going to feel that way when I go to Sweden and be like, oh yeah, this familiar. <laughs> oh, I'm just going to be like, <gasps> culture shock, this is nothing like, absolutely nothing like I've learned. I wonder, we'll see. A, a snack, grab a cup of coffee, grab a tea, grab whatever you'd like and sit down, let's get into the video. Quick reminder before we get started, if you haven't done so already, then please hit that subscribe button right below. Right below. This might be the right longest there. intro so, I have ever let's... heard. Two minutes before she's actually got to the subject. But that's okay, Kimberly, because I can wait. We can wait for her. It's all good. Start out. A long, long time ago, in a time called 2012, little... How old was I? 22-year-old Kimberly took a journey from Los Angeles 2012, 2012, that's like 13 years ago. She's the same age as me. Oh, we're the same the way age. Across the country, across the Atlantic, and landed in Copenhagen, not Sweden. I've Copenhagen. actually never flown into Sweden from, from the US. I always fly to Copenhagen and then take the train. Anyways, the night before I left for Sweden, take a train. I was actually at a casino gambling and I wound up winning $1,200 playing roulette. So that nice. was a great start of my trip. Had some extra money. Before I had gone to Sweden, I had- I mean, imagine going to Sweden or imagine going to Denmark or wherever she was when she was gambling. Imagine going and winning like 1,200. That is a good omen. That is a good, that's good energy. I'd be like, oh, I love it here. I've come here, gone to the casino, and I've won $1,200. I'd be like, I'm gonna live here. <laughs> I 
had never traveled to Europe. I had been to some Caribbean islands, so I was super excited. I was going okay. to visit my best friend who lives there. And I had actually cash because back then, at least in the US, I think it was more popular to use cash. Probably by 2012, everybody in Sweden was already using like Swish and stuff. But I <laughs> thought that I needed to bring cash and then, um, but not, what's it called? Transfer it. <gasps> and exchange, exchange. that's word. And then exchange it for Swedish kroner when I got to Sweden. So that's what I did. I traveled with $1,200 in cash, which now looking at it, I'm like, <laughs> what? But I did, and I got to Sweden. I was so nervous to be in another country by myself that um, I was like, okay, I have to trade this. I have to trans transfer. I have to exchange this at the airport before I leave the airport, because what if I get out of the airport and my card doesn't work or something like, I'm going to be stranded here forever. I'm never going to leave. I exchanged it at the airport, and I know the exchange rate was like, horrible you know the fee that they took they wound up taking so much so i got that money exchanged i went out of the um like bag baggage claim everything my friend and her two friends were going to be waiting for me there i walked out i was so excited to see them and i look around and i don't see anybody that i know it was packed with people but no familiar faces so i was like okay dun, dun, dun. i'll just wait a few minutes i think i wound up waiting like 20 minutes or so and I didn't see anybody and I was like, okay, this is where I die I'm just gonna live in Sweden. I'm just gonna live in, in Copenhagen. Actually. I'm just gonna Quite dramatic, but do you know what it is when you go on holiday or not sorry holiday when you go traveling It's scary. It's scary. And you're in a new place and everything just looks new and people you, It's a foreign land. Yeah, it's like it's a big thing traveling by yourself so Especially that you know that distance Remember when I traveled to Thailand on my own, I was like, oh my God, uh, I don't like long flights, by the way. And also just arriving in a country and everyone spoke a different language. People supposed to, you know, speak English, but it's just like, it's scary, guys. It's very scary. I'm gonna live in the airport. Like, I don't know what to do. My phone doesn't work. I was so young. I was so naive. I don't even think I realized that I could connect to the airport's Wi-Fi to like call my friend. I don't even know what I thought. I was so dumb back then. I was so nervous. And finally, I see a sign that says like my name on it with balloons and stuff. And I found my friend and her friends. But that was my first, first thing um, when I got to Sweden. I also remember thinking how clean the bathrooms were at the airport. Like that was something I noticed okay. right away was how clean the bathrooms were. I think the next thing that I noticed was the fact that you could drink directly from the sink, which was amazing to me. We did that when I was growing up in New Jersey, but that was before like anybody even had a water purifier or a water filter. And now everybody has a water filter. And when I was living in Los Angeles, where I came from, when I flew to Sweden, we absolutely did not drink the water from the faucet. The like. Oh, he's talking about in, in the house, you can just drink from the sink. That's standard. That's in same in England, uh, especially in the north of England. We have better water than London. London water is a bit... Mm. You can drink from the sink in London, but I don't like the taste of it. But in Yorkshire, where I'm from, the water's a lot nicer. And yeah, I always drank straight from the tap. Because we have good water, like you. Definitely has cancer in it don't drink it so the fact that you could just drink water directly from the faucet i was like are you sure are you sure you can do that everybody's like yeah you weirdo why wouldn't you i was like okay you're up i also remember looking at the train schedule in copenhagen airport and it was like it it to me it was like okay it could be written in chinese like there's no way i can understand this not only was everything written in swedish or danish i don't even know but another language, it was also written in the, you know, like the time zone, not the time zone, but the, we call it military time, how in Sweden and basically everywhere in the world except the US, it tells time that after after 12, that it goes to 13, 14, 15, 16, blah, blah, blah. But... They don't tell time like that. In the, I didn't know. Guys, I did not know that in the US, they don't tell the time like that. What? What? <laughs> so what do they do? Do they just say AM? 12 AM? 
want a, a do you know what I mean? Do they do it like that? Like AM, PM rather than, I don't know. That's the first time I'm learning that they don't tell time like this. But now I understand it. But back then I was like, this is another language. I don't understand this time. I don't know what is happening. When we got to the town where my friend lived, we drove past the castle. And I was like, yo, that's a castle. You have a freaking castle in your town? <laughs> I was like, what? She's like, oh yeah, there's so many castles around here. My fellow Americans, have you guys ever been driving in your town and just see a castle? Like this was so crazy to me. I was so blown away that there's just castles throughout Sweden. I don't think I even realized Welcome that there were Europe. castles before I came to Sweden. I also thought it was so cool that there's just fruit trees growing everywhere that you can just go and pick the fruit from. I had gone in the summer, so there were like apple trees, it's pear trees, time. blackberry bushes. Like we went and picked blackberries a few times and made blackberry pie out of it. Like this is crazy. This was crazy to me. I also thought it was really cool how the paper money, yes, as you know, I exchanged actual paper money instead of using my card. How it's different colors. The the corner <laughs> is different colors. <laughs> how it's diff it's different colors. <laughs> Americans, I mean all their money's green. American money is like the worst looking money ever. It's the most horrible looking money. Like it's just not nice at all. And like money in Europe, whether it's the Krona, whether it's uh the Euro, whether it's the Great British Pound it's colourful. It looks colourful. It looks inviting. And like each bill is a different colour. Whereas they, their $100, their $100 bill, their $50 bill, their $20 bill, their $10 bill, they're all, it's all green. It's all green. Whereas ours, like, I don't even need to see the number to know what it is because our £10 is different from our £20. Our £20 is different from our £5. In fact, we take it a step further. It's not just different colours different sizes <laughs> because where I just think I think if, the, if a blind person in the UK was given a note he would know just by the size what he was holding I don't know America just I don't know Pre colors and backward. different sizes depending on the value of the money so, so yours money is that's same. worth more is a bigger size than money that's worth less it's small Common sense, common sense, common sense. Do you know what to say? Common sense isn't common. And common sense obviously isn't common in America. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I'm really sorry if you're American. But I just think, did they not think to do that? Oh, yeah. How about our $10 bill be smaller than our $20 bill? That makes sense. Smaller size in US dollars in US cash, everything is the same size. So like a hundred dollar bill is the same size common as a one dollar bill and common. it's the same color. So seeing money that was different colors, I was like, is this real money or is this monopoly money like this? Why does your money have colors? I'm very confused. I also noticed that basically every Swede or person who lived in Sweden spoke English incredibly well. And they would even say like that they didn't speak English well and then they would start <laughs> speaking English and I was like, you sound like you're from California. Why do you speak such perfect English? So they would be like, oh, you're from, the, they're from the US? Sorry, my English isn't so good. Yeah, so anyways, you know, if you want to go and have a coffee down the street and I'm like, your English is perfect. What are you talking about? I think maybe they just get shy because maybe they don't speak English every day, but. Your English is, uh some of the best English I've heard from any European person, like in other countries. I think the only other country I think I heard that's like maybe better at speaking English is maybe like the Netherlands. Could be wrong. So yeah. But you start learning it at such a young age and you watch that's like TV shows and movies in English. So like everybody in Sweden has English around them basically every day, even if All you don't time. speak it, you're very used to it and you, you know how to pronounce things extremely well. Another thing that I thought was so cool was um, the fact that when you go to a coffee shop, they serve you coffee in an actual coffee mug instead of a to-go cup. And like the sugar cubes are individual sugar cubes because I was so used to going 
to like Starbucks or Dunkin Donuts and everything isn't a to-go cup that you don't have like real actual coffee cups and like what Starbucks in the UK we get you get coffee cups you get mugs if you want if you're drinking inside the coffee shop you get a mug no so in the United States she's trying to tell me that it doesn't matter if you're you're drinking inside the coffee shop or you're taking the coffee home they serve it in a paper cup what is that about that's weird it's very weird <laughs> and it's a waste you're wasting you're wasting plastic and paper like why would you serve it always in a in a disposable cup i don't know i don't know american americans americans <laughs> unless you go to like a restaurant or something and most of the time in the us um the sugar is prepackaged you don't have like sugar cubes that you then take the tongs and put them in your coffee you know it's like pre i love sugar cubes they're them they're just I don't know, the sugar cubes taste differently than like normal like granulated sugar. I just love a sugar cube you pack it. in a coffee. You just place it in, just love it. It's separate. So just like small things like that, I thought was so cool. <laughs> really, really cool. Another thing that surprised me was how many people ride bikes. Just because in the US, we're so used to driving cars and mm. if you ride a bike, it's mostly for exercise that you ride a bike. I accidentally walked into a bike lane in Denmark that I did not know was a bike lane because I'm so not used to bike lanes. And all of the bikers were like, gonna run me over basically, and were giving me very dirty looks. And it took me like a few seconds to realize like, oh shit, I'm not supposed to be here. This is just for bikes. Another thing that surprised me. I love that. Um, I love riding. My favorite things to do in the sense of like exercise and like movement was riding my bike, lifting weights and playing basketball. Those three things, those three, basketball is a sport, riding my bike and going to the gym and lifting weights. And yeah, the only thing is in the UK, our biking infrastructure as in bicycle lanes, it's okay. It's okay, it's not great, it's not great. But I know it's awesome in like Denmark and Sweden, the Netherlands and other parts of Europe where bicycling is, is, is just the norm. People commute to work riding a bicycle. So that's one thing I will really, really, really enjoy when I go to um, Sweden eventually. I'm definitely getting a bicycle and I'm definitely riding my bike and just exploring some of the cities. Um, yeah, looking forward to that surprised me was the fact that back then, anyway, in 2012, you could smoke outside at restaurants because in the US, in New Jersey, smoking at restaurants has been banned since like 2006. So I was like 16, no, I was 15 when smoking was banned in New Jersey. And then smoking in, even outside at restaurants was banned in California in like 1995. So that was like way before my time. So the fact that you could go to a restaurant and smoke outside at the restaurant, I was like, whoa, whoa, huh. Another thing that really surprised me was the fact that you have to schedule a laundry time. I had asked my friend to do a oh, load yeah, of laundry and this. she was like, I don't know. I don't know if we have laundry she time today. I've seen her video, and like literally entire video about her being in the laundry room and scheduling her laundry in her laundry, in her, in her flat. I was like, apartment. what do you mean the laundry time? She's like, Kim, you can't just do laundry whenever you want. I was like, what are you talking about? She's like, you have to schedule a laundry time. I'm like, I don't know what you mean. <laughs> so that took like some getting used to and that was really, really surprising for me. Another thing that surprised me is the fact that at beaches, um, there were no lifeguards at the beach because here in America, you have lifeguards at the beach. So they're set in their little lifeguard chairs. And if okay. you go out too far, then they like blow their whistle and they wave you back in. Or sometimes, rarely, but sometimes they have to jump in and save somebody from a riptide or who's not a very strong swimmer. And yeah, in Sweden, um, the water is much, much calmer than the beaches like here in New Jersey or in um, Los Angeles. So I do understand why there's not as much need as lifeguards because it's almost more like a lake, the, the beaches in Sweden, and less like an ocean with like big waves. 
I learned in Sweden that kids get swimming lessons like in school so everybody knows how to swim which yeah. is awesome so at the beach what did they do in the UK in the US the kids not get taught how to swim in school that's like normal like in in UK schools like you get swimming lessons from the age of like let me think the first time I went swimming <sighs> From the age of like five years old, like really, maybe younger actually, ever since I can remember when I was like little, very, very little, you used to go swimming. Like swimming was just normal. Like everyone went swimming. So what do they do in the States to just not teach, teach you how to swim? I don't understand. What? Beach, if you're at the beach, then you know how to swim. Like you've had swimming lessons. And in America, if you want to swim, you have to get your own swimming lessons. Like you have to go to a, a place and pay for lessons or somebody can teach. I'm not the strongest swimmer, but I know how to swim-ish. Um, but the fact that you have to get your own swimming lessons in the States, that's so bad. <laughs> no wonder they have lifeguards. They need them. They need lifeguards at the beach. Teach you, but it's definitely not. Included. I do. That's funny. They're probably spending more money on lifeguards. If they just offered like free swimming lessons to their to their, their young people, that's probably cheaper than employing all these lifeguards to sit and wait until someone is drowning in the ocean. Included in your school curriculum. Another thing that I noticed when I was in Sweden was how many pizza places there were. There are so many pizza places. You guys love pizza. I also remember thinking how little homeless people I saw in Stockholm because I That's had been good. used to seeing New York and Los Angeles, which is, there's so many homeless people. It is so sad. And in Stockholm. Have you seen Los Angeles, guys? Bad. I watched a video the other, other day and it was like of Skid Row. There's got, they've got an area called Skid Row in Los Angeles where literally there's hundreds if not thousands of homeless people just on the street just living living their home is skid row like there's a whole entire like miles of blocks like areas where like homeless people just have set up little tents and it's horrific it's horrible in the middle of la with palm trees it's the weirdest thing good like you're on youtube after you watch my video go check out skid row Type in Skid Row, LA. It's or it's absolutely horrible. Oh, horrible. I think I saw maybe three homeless people. I also noticed how beautiful Swedish girls are. Like, simply beautiful. Mm -hmm. They have such like a delicate look to them. And most of them don't mm -hmm. wear a lot of makeup. They're just like naturally beautiful. I also noticed how the style in Sweden is very simple, very clean, very fresh, but really nice. And basically everybody has a really nice style. I also remember driving on the bridge from Denmark to Sweden and seeing Sverige. And I asked my friend like, what is Sverige? <laughs> and she laughed and she's like, that's what Sweden. Swedish people call Sweden. And I was like, oh, so I also learned what Sverige yeah. was during that trip. That's Side note, don't you think, think it's it weird that there is not one universal name for all the countries? People in Sweden call Sweden Sverige, people in America call Sweden Sweden. In every country, depending on the language, there's a different name for each country. Do you know what I mean? Isn't that strange? Why isn't no. there one, just like one universal? Because the people speak different languages, so obviously you're gonna call things with different names. No, it's not strange. So, word for every country. I don't know, I'm getting off topic. Wrapping this up, the last thing that I realized when I came to Sweden for the first time was how many less rules there are than in the US. I mean, like, you can basically swim anywhere, you can basically camp anywhere, you can hike anywhere, you can park anywhere you can like camp in a parking lot if you want you know in in your um rv you can just stop overnight and camp there and in america there's so many signs everywhere like no swimming no hiking no dogs no parking no camping no running like there's so many rules for everything and in sweden when i went there i realized just how much more free and how much more chill it is there like you have how ironic is that, that she's saying she went to Sweden and she realized how 
free it is in Sweden. What's the nickname for the USA? The land of the free. It's obviously not that free (laughs) in the US. That's very ironic. The decision to do what you want and the government just trusts you, you know? Also, I thought those grills, those like one-time use grills that you can buy at the store and then just take anywhere like to the woods or whatever or the beach and barbecue those are incredible i have never seen those before i do not think we have them in america well do you know what it's so weird like the superpower of the world the 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 top dog of the world america like they don't have like really basic stuff that you'd think Surely you're like a very, very rich country and you don't have like basic things. A disposable barbecue. Disposable barbecue. They don't have disposable barbecues in in, in um, America. Like disposable barbecues are something that like we've always, we use them all the time in the UK because not everyone has a barbecue in their backyard like. And I think in America, they have those big industrial barbecue, (laughs) big, massive barbecue grill, like, especially in the South and whatever. But yeah, no, disposable barbecues are like perfect because if you don't have the space, they're only like this big, about this big, disposable barbecues. You can just have a barbecue like in your backyard or on a porch or in a park. Or anywhere you want, on a bench, wherever you want a barbecue, you can barbecue. In America, because I have I literally barbecue. never seen them. And every I American person that now. I've talked to about this is like, wow, what a great idea. Because it is. That was something that I thought like, yes, this is so cool. If anybody wants to open that business with me in America, let's do it. But I think <laughs> the reason why we don't have them what, here is what because in America, I thought I like, that. yes, great idea. And every American person that I've talked to about this is like, wow, what a great idea. Incredible. I have never seen those before. I do not think we is have them in America because I have literally never seen business. them. And every American person that I've talked to about this is like, wow, what a great idea. Because it is. That was something that I did thought they really like, not have yes, those this is so barbecues. cool. If anybody wants to open that business with me in America, let's do it. But I think the reason why we don't have them here is because I'm telling you, like, there's so many rules. Like, you can't grill in those woods. You can't grill here. You can't grill at the beach. There's just more rules. Anyway, guys, I know this video was a little bit scattered around um, because I was there in 2012. It was, what? Math. It was almost 10 years ago. So um, I don't remember, you know, like every detail, but these were just the things that I remember learning about for the first time and thinking like, cool, or like, huh, or like, okay, or like, why don't we do that in America? Because that's awesome. If you like this video, then please give it a thumbs up and leave me a comment down below. And let me know what you would like to see in a future video. I love hearing your suggestions and comments. Other than that, guys, it's Sunday. It's a cozy, cozy night. What is that word you guys have for Sunday cozy time? Sundos, sundogs, make sundogs, sundogs something. I'm going to go and... <laughs> She's so funny. She lives in Sweden, but like, like, okay, this was quite early on in her channel. So she she didn't know how to speak a lot of Swedish and she didn't know a lot of Swedish terms. I don't know this term. I don't live in Sweden. But um, yeah, I love Kimberly. She's, she's very, very funny. But I can't believe that last one about the barbecue. Really? They don't have disposable barbecues? <laughs> Insane. Guys, thank you very much for watching. Until the next one, I'll see you very soon.